So look out for them. The first one is going to be, uh, we have six workshops every evening from tomorrow till next Monday. So uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday and Monday, 5 to 8 p.m. Dubai time. Those are paid workshops, $299 per participant. Uh, but we're giving away three invites for free during this discussion. All you need to do is fill a short form, uh, which we'll send to you in the chat. So look out for that. And uh, uh, you know if you can tell us why, how you will benefit from that workshop, we'll send you an invite to three people who are attending. Um, there's going to be another giveaway. We like to call people like yourself in as speakers to our web summit, not just uh, listening. Um, so we're going to send out a form which you need to complete if you want to be a speaker in the next edition of Connected Insights. Uh, so that's it from me. Uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe one quick thing. We've made many of you panelists rather than attendees. Uh, we're going to make almost everyone over here panelists rather than attendees. The reason for this is because we want you to keep your video on, uh, interact with us, uh, and not let this be a one-way thing. Uh, just feel free to raise your hands, or if you have your video on, wave to us. And uh, we are happy to take questions either between or after the, after the summit, uh, sorry, after the webinar. Uh, so that's about it from me again. Uh, Ahmed, over to you. I'm really looking forward to this session. And Mohanna. Hi, everyone. This is Mohanna speaking from eDesign. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for being with us. <clears throat> and I appreciate for now if everyone can mute their mics. So if you have any question about a specific slide and you want to answer directly, you can say, uh, as, as my colleague said, you can raise your hand. Uh, otherwise, you can keep your uh, questions in the Q&A field and we can answer them in the end of the webinar. If you wasn't able to do this, we'll share it over the email with everyone. So let me introduce our uh, speaker. So uh, Ahmed, if you can share your screen, please. Just a second. <clears throat> so our speaker today is uh, my colleague Ahmed Taiba. Um, he is uh, the co-founder and CEO for several companies, but he is now acting for now on this presentation as a co-founder and CEO for eDesign Digital Agency. Uh, Ahmed has around 18 years experience in information, information technology and with working with marketeers, he was able to mix uh, the art and science in digital marketing. So I'll not speak a lot with him. I think we'll share this presentation with you later on. Uh, and I'll give the mic to my colleague, Ahmed, to start. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you're going to benefit from this uh, small details I'm going to share with you. Uh, it's just an introduction to uh, personalized customer experience and what you need to do about it. So we'll try to share as much info information as I could. And uh, later, maybe in the Q&A, we can dig deeper based on your questions. Um, so in general, what is, uh, uh, what is personalized customer experience in marketing and how you can leverage uh, your marketing campaign and activity in order to, uh, to increase the conversion of uh, whatever you're doing today? Uh, the first point you need to consider is it's all about data. It's all about understanding your customer much more clearly, and that will help you understand uh, how how every uh, every one of your customers or your target audience is thinking, uh, planning, uh, anticipating from you, and so on. So today, when I heard the question in the beginning, I can see the uh, the high uh, the high expectation from everyone from this presentation, and I hope I can meet this expectation by the end of the presentation. Um, one of the, if you, I'm sure every one of us today have experienced a lot of things uh, about um, how Google and Netflix and Amazon uh, really personalize every one of us experience or every one of the visitor experience. And to later, later today in the slides, we're gonna speak, uh, share more details about their uh, how they gonna how are they gonna uh, they're using the uh, uh, customer experience perspective uh, from the level of high personalization 
and their details on the different products, how they are collecting the data, how this helping them in, in increasing the conversion or retention of the customers as well. Let's go in some statistic about the uh, important or the majority of the business industries in personalization right now. Uh, so there is around 98% uh, of marketeers say that personalization uh, advances customer relationship. And that's, uh, that's because today when, when someone speak about something related to you or you see an, an, a product or information that resonates with what you're expecting, this will grab your attention and make you uh, uh, look forward to hear more about this. Uh, and uh, the second point is right, there is around uh, 89% of digital businesses are investing in personalization, which is a very high number. Um, and 79% of retailers are investing as well in personalization. That they are the most uh, investment in the industry itself. Um, I have, uh, let's share this information. Even I have heard, um, I've read once about IBM. They have built using their Watson um, uh, machine learning tool a tool that helps the industry of fashion to ex to uh, to share with the fashion designer what people are expecting from an, a sort of styles and colors so they can use it in designing for the next season. Uh, another thing is the 51% of marketers as will say personalization is their top priority and 88% of marketeers say their biggest driver in personalization is the delivery of better customer experience. And this is very crucial of, uh, of the, uh, the personal, uh, uh, personal customization today. Now, now let's understand um, how, how do we, what do we do to understand our customer more? The most important point over here is gathering data and um, they will come to certain points that will help us to gather further data. One of the main thing is the CRM. Uh, today, you're gonna find a lot of tools about the CRM uh, that you are uh, most probably, so a lot of you are using, but uh, some of these tools are actually, it is more uh, catered in order to capture all type of data and information with regard to your customers. Um, like, uh, for example, their interest, how you connect all the feed of the social media in that. Uh, uh, for every person, even if you have an e-commerce website or a personal website as well, you connect all the data of their pages they're visiting, when they are visiting, at what time, uh, their purchasing history. Uh, uh, as well, if you have another different marketing tool and we come ja now to jump and speak about, for example, the analytics, um, there are a lot of tools to, that help you to understand how your customers, even to an individual level, using your website, your even social media, interact with them at what time, and these data, when you, when you leverage this data and I, I put it to, uh, with the help of data scientists or data analysts, in order to simplify the data for you in order to take the right action to improve your uh, customer experience or personalization to your customer. As well, one of the most important thing is the, uh, the survey and form, the how you in interact or engage your survey in the, your business process, whether you're an offline or an online business, uh, in order to capture more data about your customer, their experience, why they, look, why they like your product or dislike your product, and you to leverage this to even create more, uh, more personalization. Uh, one of the other thing is the uh, uh, demand-sided platform, which is this is a platform, uh, it's used by advertiser to buy mobile and search data and video ads from marketplaces that uh, help you to get uh, uh, further insight and can cater website design or your product aligned with the core audience that you're uh, capturing this data from. Uh, the last thing is the uh, uh, top management platform and uh, tag management, sorry, tag management platform, uh, which is 
some of sometimes you get a lot of data, but um, digging deeper in this data without the help of uh, tagging or uh, using and or dividing this data into different tags in order to come back to this data later or classify it in an easier way for you to capture the information uh, that uh, that will help you a lot in 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 the in your personalization journey. Um, now we're gonna just jump into uh, some benefits for the businesses in general. Uh, one of the most uh, benefit is increasing your customer loyalty. So um, some research give us that 65% of companies' businesses come from repeat customer. And, uh, and the repeat customer comes because of personalization. And there is different type of uh, information related to this formula that you can consider uh, as well. Um, and uh, they mentioned over 40% of consumers say that they're more, more likely to become a repeat customer because of a business that offering personalization. And we can see this in uh, uh, Amazon today, how they're dealing with their customer. And we'll get uh, further details on that later on the slide. Uh, the second point is a better, this is, will help you to do a better return of investment. Uh, especially in your marketing investment. And not a lot of companies actually, they can measure the actual uh, marketing turnover that they're spending. Uh, and this is very crucial in order to um, uh, keep optimizing your, the way you do marketing or marketing campaign or the investment. Why today, if you don't really know that your, um, for example, your uh, 100,000, uh, let's say $10,000 investment in, in a marketing campaign, how much did it actually bring businesses to you? Knowing that will help you to actually the next time to increase it because in the end, uh, it will help you to capitalize. So there we call about several, a couple of steps that you need to consider is always plan for return of investment, align marketing analytics with financial goals, um, as predictive as modeling, um, use predictive modeling as well, obtain customer engagement data from all the social media feed you can possibly have. Um, uh, and another thing, avoid uh, vanity metrics. So make things that you're using is simple for you to understand, customize your report, track customer behavior constantly, analyze your data uh, before, during, and after your campaign or the things. And the one of the important thing as well is they always is sell, sell, sell. This is the this is the core. This is what you're doing uh, doing this for. And make sure whatever you're doing is um, uh, is measurable. Uh, make sure you're using the right analytic tools. Um, use this data in building the right strategy. Uh, in, in your campaigns and your data personalization as well, understand the customer decision journey, uh, discuss the uh, return of investment with entire organization uh, of your team. This is, will help you to get more insight, more information uh, and see things you're not expecting. Uh, the, one of the most important things that a lot of people forget is always try to experiment frequently as much as possible. Try uh, before you capitalize try several things, do something called of A-B testing, we'll come to this later as well, uh, in order to find which one is generating the highest conversion for you uh, based on the data you are ha you're having, and then uh, move to the next step. And don't worry about your decision, you can always uh, recover in the next campaign. Uh, let's jump into the customer benefit and how this will help the customer from the customer perspective. And this is, we're all doing all of this is because of our customers and how we are going to help them to capitalize on their investment, their data, what they're looking for, how we can make their experience as smooth as possible, as this as possible. Uh, uh, one of the most benefit is you're going to boost the conversion uh, uh, and the ROI and loyal customer. Uh, in a survey, uh, um, one of the surveys like um, got roughly 90% say that they found personalization more appealing uh, than just going there without having the data that I'm interested on or the information I'm, I'm interested for. And, and um, as well, 80% said that could 
would more likely to shop in a business offer than we mentioned this earlier in uh, in the data in the beginning of the presentation so this is will increase the trust by understanding their problem needs because now they know what, they know what i need and they always find uh, I always find the product I'm looking for when I go to this website or that website. And this is one of the tools that has to do with the um, technique, has to do with the uh, um, remarketing uh, techniques that uh, a lot of agencies do in order to reach to the customers. Uh, it makes the customer journey much more easier and uh, appealing to the customer and much more satisfying to the customer. One of the other thing is uh, relevant messages. Uh, today, uh, not every message you send is, is clickable with the audience and that's, uh, that's reflected by the uh, um, ROI you're getting from this campaign or this data. So it is always important to uh, uh, cat uh, categorize your uh, the messages to the right audience. One of these practices may be famous if people, uh, most of you are using newsletter. In the newsletter, a lot of people just send newsletter like this, but in, in most advanced newsletter, for example, you have the, uh, the ability to select the topic you're interested on, the frequency you're interested on, and so on. And this is a sort of uh, personalization uh, and so on. That's, that's what you need to look on. Um, uh, and even sometimes is the right channel as well. So maybe you can consider every channel have it should have a different content and in a different timing when you're posting or when you're doing your campaign because this is when you're converging. And, and most of the channels today in the social media, uh, they have their own algorithm in one when to share your, uh, show your post or not based on the interest of the audience itself. Uh, so we speak about such data is like preferred on a different channels and so on. And these type of metrics will help you to, to analyze the data much more. So uh, watch up for your next messaging or newsletter. <clears throat> uh, one of the important thing as well is testing and validation. Now you have a lot of data that you are gathering from your audience and you, uh, in order to build this experience, what you need to do is, is to test it. Test it, use uh, like a small budget, a small, um, a small sample of these data and trying to uh, make sure that uh, your customer is, uh, or the, uh, the data you are using is converting properly right uh, and so on. And one of the things you need to consider is user experience. User experience is very crucial in websites uh, and e-commerce today because um, it could it could uh, hit or break your uh, entire businesses because people see that no I'm not finding the website easy to find to use or uh, the, uh, reaching the right product in the right manner and you always you can try uh, A/B testing in order to improve your website your campaign and so on the A/B testing techniques is when you use always like a double solution or double pages. For example, if you're gonna change your product page, you're gonna, def uh, you're gonna design two different product pages based on a different data you have, and then you can re uh, unleash these different pages to different type of customers, and the one that actually converts much more, that's the one you maintain and keep doing this every while, and then in order to increase the uh, retention or the, for example, the uh, bounce rate on this page or on your website. Um, as an example today, Amazon is one of the most advanced example in personalized marketing strategy they are using. If you have ever heard recommended for you, you may also like this approaches by Microsoft and how they are using this algorithm in order to keep, um, uh, to keep you or in order to show the right product to the customers. Um, customer who bought this item also bought this as well. This is another thing that uh, Amazon use. Um, it's not only the way to sell more stuff, it is also to provide shopper with the peace of mind, knowing that other people uh, like this product as well. So, so uh, <clears throat> the feedback of uh, like-minded people or uh, someone else that I trust is a high influencer 
in in my buying decision uh, and uh, an even conversion decision. So if, if if I saw my friend interested in one product, oh, let me check more and so on, and that could increase in in the in the conversion. Uh, also, Amazon uses a process called uh, collaborative filtering to make recommendations. So this has helped them in order to share that uh, relevant product to you. So enhance your digital marketing strategy using machine learning. Uh, most of what we're going to talk about in the next stage is how to use the artificial intelligence and machine learning in order to do, because today, you're, I'm sure most of you heard about big data. Uh, today is handling this data is very difficult to handle this manually. So usually you need to use a sort of analytical tools and machine learning tools to analyze extremely large amount of data in order to simplify it for you and give you an understanding or a standable simplified data uh, for you to analyze, um, and usually these things are done by data scientists or data analysts uh, in order for you to help. So usually the marketing team um, nowadays, you will find the data science and data analysis one of the top jobs in the market today because of the importance of um, captioning all this data and making sense of it in result of uh, business decision or marketing decision and so on. But the question is how exactly uh, are machine learning tools being used in digital marketing? And we go for some of example to use. One of the things is like, for example, content marketing, uh, link building, we call it backlinking building and the search engine optimization, uh, pay-per-click campaigns, search engine optimization, content management and shot bots as well. These are all different tools and so on. Um, We'll go now to a couple of examples. Uh, Google, for example, double, uh, Google using double click uh, uses machine learning to increase the number of viewable impression uh, that you are getting. So this is their techniques. Uh, as well, Google Analytical 360 uses machine learning to bring metrics like session, the session length, page view, geographical location, uh, and others to make higher value decision for you to make uh, uh, to, to decide on. Uh, as well, YouTube uses machine learning in classification, uh, flagging, and disabling. I'm not sure if one of you experienced uh, uploading a video and immediately uh, you have a conflict with um, audio or you have, uh, of, or you, the, your video has been disabled because of content rights and so on. This is done by machine learning. Google Smart Bidding to maximize the conversion of uh, pay-per-click campaigns um, uh, you're gonna do. And this is how to help you as well to get, uh, to, to actually capture your, uh, your investment as well to reach to your right audience. Um, another example, very good example is Netflix. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you is using Netflix or at least use Netflix. So they're, uh, they're Algorithm is powered by uh, machine learning uh, in order to uh, tell you um, the type of movie you are interested on or TV show, uh, show you are interested on uh, that could uh, most likely or more likely to uh, for you to watch or see. Optimize the production of original movies. So it's not only online, but even to understand how they need uh, to use the data on to shoot a new movie or a new uh, TV show based on the interest of people they are seeing, who's, um, uh, how people are spending or watching their data and using this information. Oh, now we have a lot of people interested in this type of industry or topics. Let's do a TV show or a movie about this. And in Netflix, you will find a lot of their own, uh, for example, documentaries built based on this data optimize their video and audio encoding so it's adaptable if you now today if you when you go for example watching youtube or videos you find that you don't have an issue with the speed it's immediately adaptive in order for to appear appealing to you uh, based on your connection speed and your screen size 
its power as well as uh, advertising spending and channel mix and advertising creativity. Um, uh, to, uh, as well, it helped them in creating uh, characteristics that makes content much more uh, successful. One of the other things to find new members who will enjoy Netflix when they're using uh, in the advertising, uh, um, when Netflix advertise from them, for themselves. Using machine learning as well uh, across Netflix bring many new challenges where they need to push forward um, the state of art technology they're using. This means um, they usually come up with new ideas and test them out before it comes to the public. Uh, new models they have to use, algorithm, uh, or improving the existing one as well. Uh, better, uh, better, um, uh, better matter, uh, sorry, uh, I lost what I'm saying. They, they use the data in algorithm in improving the existing one as well, better metrics and evaluation what the methodology they are using and that's helping always to improve the conversion of their content or movies and, and so on. Um, Shotbots, uh, our third example and the last example, uh, Shotbots come in two main flavors. Usually there is a shotbot done by uh, a functional base or rule base so you just um, anticipate the logic completely and the other one is based on artificial intelligence or machine power and the the machine learning one is offered more informa informative answer so it is less like you will be not be able to distinguish from human and chatbot in some cases uh, i'm not sure if a lot of you um, uh, experience in the uh, um, uh, some of the mega companies they're um, answering machine for example in getting when they answer they have an automated voice record, uh, voice messaging that will help them in order to uh, respond to your requirements on, uh, by by phone or online uh, for example when you ask uh, they will ask any there's a, there's an automated answering machine that will help they uh, interact with you in order to give you what you want from the service they're providing. I've experienced this, for example, with AT&T in US. I've experienced this with one of the uh, uh, power company or energy company they have over there uh, and so on. Um, in, in more intelligent, uh, the chatbot is the smoother the user experience is, but still this is still um, an, an improvement industry. Uh, because a lot of the chat, uh, chat, uh, chatbots and the machine learning behind it depends on NLP, neural language uh, programming or solving, in order to make it still unfancy, uh, but it's still uh, a way in, in, in progress. Uh, last, before we jump to the uh, question and answer, we're gonna, uh, what you need to do next in order to jump into personalization or improve the way you're doing personalization. The first thing is you need to start getting more data and data and data and data. Capture all these data you have as much as possible. Don't let any data be, and try to connect all these data together. Today, there is a lot of uh, artificial intelligence solution or smart uh, cognitive solution uh, that will help you to uh, categorize your data, even uh, even if your that uh, if your data does not make sense. The 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 solution have the ability to make sense of these entire data, and then try be, after you get this data, try to generate customer persona. Um, this uh, website you can uh, use it. It's very easy. Uh, it's a very nice tool that help you to build your customer persona and other has to do with user experience is a very useful one to, to use. Um, this, the third uh, step is mapping your content. Uh, mapping your content is bringing all the content that is, you think is relevant based on your customer persona and uh, gather it all. The fourth step is now dividing this the uh, dividing or breaking this content into a personalized, a personalized patches 
based on your customer persona in order to increase the conversion. Um, two years ago, we've done a campaign uh, for the launching of the S-Class. And this campaign, we use, I think, uh, almost, um, if I'm not mistaken, around 38 different content personalization for, like we used to have uh, a sort of five to six different type of content for every single channels we are advertising on. And uh, we ended up uh, winning an award based on this conversion rate because of this uh, practice and personalization. The last aspect is now you have all the data, you have all the content. Now try to leverage how to gonna make your customer um, uh, experience much better using the personalization data you have. Uh, so um, I hope that I made your, uh, I, I give you just an open mind thing, uh, open mind to, uh, uh, to personalization. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot to talk about this. And um, uh, now I would love to jump to the question and answer and, uh, and let's see how we can uh, dig deeper in uh, uh, answer any of, in, of your inquiries. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, so for now, I, I don't think anyone write any question. So we'll open, we'll keep the mics open for everyone so they can ask whatever they want about this topic. So everyone, anyone have any question about, uh, about this? Any question, any challenge related to user experience, personalization, uh, how you think you're gonna do this? What is the right tools and so on? Yeah, I think someone raised his hand. Seppo, you can feel free to talk, please. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, Hi. now now the mic is working. Yeah, yeah. thanks for a tr thrilling presentation. I. I would like to ask a question that how do you see that what will happen when when this uh, Google's new act, act against third party cookies will will take the real impact so how, how do you think that that will change the opportunities for personalization uh, so so um, the 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 cookies uh, rule that is happening now in Europe especially um, it will not harm your uh, personalization because today uh, you're getting the data from different aspects and your customer who's interested in um, you much more, they will give you the right one or the right to uh, store or capture data from them, uh, which will enable you to, uh, to more uh, personalize their experience. However, however, this is this is goes to the individual level, but in the in the abroad level, you are ca still capturing all the data of how the user is using your website. But you're not just um, you're not recording the uh, cookies on their platform in order to capture like things of free marketing and so on, or even dig deeper of the data or of different website they're um, uh, viewing. Uh, today, there is a lot of tools uh, that help you to capture data like this, there are tools, for example, that enable you to know um, your competitor website, uh, when, when your customers visit or potential customer visits your competitor website, what other websites as will they visit? Um, and stuff like this, that will help you. I hope I, uh, I answered your question correctly. Yeah, thanks. Anyone else, please. If not, can we do a customary photo? Sure. Perfect. So maybe you can stop sharing your screen and uh, uh, participants, if you can please switch on your video, uh, if you're comfortable with that and uh, uh, you know, uh, fix your hair and let's do one photo. 
So working from home is challenging this. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. But any, That's anyway, we anyway, anyway, we'll do it. I'll give everyone 10 more seconds or 15 more seconds if they need it. So in the end, if you give me the chance, I would like to, to brief everyone uh, for two minutes about e-design, if you don't sure. mind. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Perfect. Uh, so I'm going to say, uh, everybody say with me, one, two, three, e-design. <laughs> Perfect. We're done. Thank you so much for that. Uh, go ahead, uh, Mohanad. Thank you. Thank you. So just to give you a, a small brief, two minutes only, I'll take from your time. So eDesign, it's a digital local agency in the Middle East. We started in Saudi Arabia 2007. And uh, until now, we are focusing on digital. Uh, when we start, we start on the shy way for website development. Nowadays, we are helping people in digital transformation. Our main strength that we have, uh, we serve around 200 sectors, not 200 clients, 200 sectors with over 1,700 projects. And the second strength is we are a part of uh, E3 international network uh, agencies that have uh, the master agencies uh, all over the world. So give, uh, it gives us a lot of insights, understanding about the global uh, market. And that's it for us. We are available for you at edesign.com.sa. So visit our website. Thank you, guys. Thank you. On Wednesday and, and Thursday, we have another uh, webinar that one speak about um, sales conversion in e-commerce, how you increase your sales conversion by at least 25%. This is actually more uh, practical or essential. And the other one has to do how uh, data is important and analytic and how to manage, measure everything you're doing. Great. Absolutely. You can say you can see in the chat. Uh, we've posted the links for those two. If anyone wants to look at them, uh, Alvin can post them again if you want. Sure. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you so everyone. Much. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Thank you. Bye bye.